Hi folks, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. Been getting some requests lately for me to speak about the basics of regulators. That's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to be talking about the basics of regulators. Maybe you're new to scuba diving, maybe you're ready to buy your own regulator and would like to know a little bit more about them before you start investing some money. Let's start with uh, first stages. Now I've got here in front of me a, a kind of a wide selection of regulators. These are all fairly name brand. This is an Apex, this is an Aqualung, and this is a Scuba Pro. Let's take a look at the first stages here. This happens to be a DIN first stage. This particular first stage on the Apex is a diaphragm style first stage, which means it's actually got a diaphragm in there for its actuation. And this happens to be an environmentally sealed first stage. This is the Aqualung unit. This Aqualung unit is a yoke first stage, which means it's got a yoke connection on it. Now, the reason we call it yoke, it looks a little bit like an oxen's yoke. In Europe and some other places, they actually call this an A-clamp. Now, this is also a, a diaphragm style first stage, and this one is not environmentally sealed. Now, we're gonna move right over here. Now, this Scuba Pro is a piston style first stage, and it actually uses what we term a piston for its actuation. And one of the other interesting things about this first stage is this first stage incorporates a turret. Now, a turret, what that actually does is it just gives a little bit more movement when you're trying to move your head around a little bit and a little bit more um, convenience to the diver. Maybe you're not having to bite so hard on your mouthpiece. One of the other things that I was gonna speak about on this DIN first stage here, now DINs you see um, in Europe and the overseas areas a lot. A lot of the tech divers like to use DINs because when you actually screw this into the tank, then it actually fully captures the O-ring. Whereas on an A-clamp or on your yoke style, it doesn't really capture it, it just encloses it. So it, uh, some people feel that the, the DIN is a little safer when you're using a higher pressure tank of sorts. Now, the environmental seal that we see right here on this one, on the Apex, that uh, is mainly meant for, for cold weather diving is where it really comes from. And what it's saying is as you have air, the high pressure air coming out of the tank being transferred into a low pressure situation or a intermediate pressure situation, then it cools. Now, if you happen to be diving in cold water or colder water and you mix those two together, then you could get some freeze up in that first stage and having an environmental seal helps keep the water separated from the internal workings per se of the first stage. When we talk about the uh, Aqualung over here and I said it's not environmentally sealed, there's actually an opening in the end of the uh, first stage that water goes into. Now, all of these first stages are what we call balanced first stages. Now, what does balance mean? As you dive deeper and you accumulate additional atmospheres, then that water pressure either pushing against the seal are going into the first stage, pushing against the little actuation uh, mechanism in there, uh, and that's also involved in the, in the piston style. Then as you go deeper and you accumulate more atmospheres or greater pressure, 
then what happens is internally, these regulators allow the intermediate pressure, I'm gonna speak on that in a second, it allows that intermediate pressure to be risen mechanically. So as you dive deeper, they will automatically raise the intermediate pressure. When we talk about a first stage, what does it really do? Well, it's the first place the air goes when it comes out of the tank valve. That's basically why we call it a first stage. And so what it's doing is taking the high pressure air out of the tank and changing it basically, or lowering it to what we call intermediate pressure. Now, some people tend to call it low pressure, but it's really more of a term we use is intermediate pressure. And that's the pressure that goes down the hose into our second stages. Now, briefly, when we take a look at the hoses on these three regulators. These two regulators, the Apex and the Aqualung, have these braided hoses on it. The braided hoses are, tend to be more flexible under pressure, and again, it just provides the diver a little bit more comfort when they're moving the head. The turret-style regulators can be had, and like this one here, actually comes with the solid rubber. You can change these hoses over to braided. When that intermediate pressure comes down these hoses and goes into your second stage, now in the second stage, we basically have behind this front purge cover, we have a diaphragm, and what that diaphragm is doing, it's separating the water from the air that you're getting ready to breathe. It senses the ambient pressure, whether you're at the surface or ambient pressure can be underwater at any particular depth. It senses that ambient pressure, and when you breathe in, it delivers the air to you at matching pressure to the ambient pressure. And that's how you're able to equalize your mask, your, all your air spaces and everything in your, uh, when you dive. So that's basically what is happening inside a second stage. So high pressure into intermediate pressure, intermediate pressure into the second stage, and then when you breathe in, it goes from intermediate pressure into your ambient pressure. So just a quick primer, at the surface, our atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSI. When we get down to 33 feet, we've got two atmospheres, so basically 29.4 PSI. So what's happening is that second stage is delivering that air to you at 29.4, and you can equalize against the surrounding ambient pressure. And we've all stood on the side of the pool, well, the mass majority of us, we've stood on the side of the pool, you take a big breath, you jump in, swim down to the bottom of the pool, and you feel that pressure on your ears. The reason it, you can't hardly equalize is because you've held your breath at the surface at one atmosphere, and now you've gone down to the bottom of the pool, let's say it happens to be 15 feet. Then basically, you're at an additional half atmospheres. So trying to get your inside pressure inside at one atmosphere to equalize against one and a half atmospheres can be difficult. But the beauty of what Mr. Cousteau and Mr. Gagon has helped us with here is that the second stage delivers the air to us at the matching ambient pressure, so it makes it nice and easy for us to equalize, and we really don't even feel like there's any great change in pressure out there. Now, we've got a, some different second stages here, and basically we've got, you know, again, we've got a purge cover, uh, our basic mouthpiece like what you see here, and you see how tiny, this is an Aqualung's Micron, and it's a very small, very lightweight second stage. And virtually all these second stages today are made out of a, a, a composite type material. 
and they may have a metal in the in what we call the barrels or the internal workings and stuff and some of them are strictly plastic it just depends on the manufacturer one of the other things that you're going to notice is we've got some different side controls on these second stages here and what you see is we've got a lever here and we've got a knob here on the side now what this does the lever will adjust the venturi now what does venturi mean venturi means when i have this pushed forward then what's happening is this regulator is less sensitive to my in breath because when i breathe in actually turned by either a little vein or a little block or whatever a uh, little curve and it actually forces the air against the diaphragm first and then it turns and comes down the throat of the second stage regulator into my mouth it actually desensitizes the second stage a little bit and you guys have been out there you've taken the second stage and turned it so the mouthpiece is up and put it in water and it free flows then it has lesser of a a tendency to do that okay and sometimes you're going to see a little vein on top it says dive or pre-dive and that has a, a similar effect to what we're talking about here this has a, a bit more pronounced effect to it and you'll see something similar over here on the scuba pro and on the aqualung here it actually is a kind of a double incorporated version of what you see on these two now the knob on both of these control what we call the braking pressure and sensitivity is maybe a better word so what you do is again there's a spring in here that is it's needed to help keep that little seat closed and then when you breathe in that opens and allows the air to come through if you didn't have that little spring in there then the when you turn the tank pressure on it just it you know just flow all the time so what you have to be able to do is have a little bit of pressure against that seat so that it stays closed but what the knob does it adjusts that pressure so that you suck easier or you might have to suck a little harder to get that seat that spring to open up to provide that air to you the adjustment is not tremendous it's like three turns something like that but you can feel the difference on both of these hopefully that gives you some of the basics of regulators and uh, some of the different configurations and what we mean by little things like din first stage yoke first stage braided hose uh, adjustability of the second stage things along those lines i think you'll find if you invest a few dollars in a true moldable mouthpiece that uh, you'll find a huge amount of comfort in that you're not having to bite on your regulator uh, especially if you've got one with a solid rubber hose on it uh, or maybe you know if you combine the turret with the braided hose and a molded mouthpiece wow it's just it's it's just amazing how comfortable that particular um, type of of regulator being held in your mouth is and you'll find it's a lot easier for you to equalize i hope you've enjoyed this little discussion about regulators Again, my name's Bob Collins for the Diver Supply Channel. If you're new here, please reach down there and hit the subscribe button. If you use one of these regulators, maybe you prefer a DIN, maybe you like the yoke, whatever. Make you, maybe you like the Apex over the Scuba Pro. If you need some additional help, call our 800 number. We'd be glad to chat with you about the differences. Allow us to be a, a resource for you when you get ready to buy your scuba equipment or if you're ready to buy a new regulator. So again, thanks for watching. And as we always say here at Diver Supply, dive safe. Thanks a lot.